on the storm Riders on the storm Into this house we're born Into this world we're thrown Like a dog without a bone And actor out of law Riders on the storm Riders on the storm that is a, another song that uh, people, you know, that's a door song. No one else did a song like that with uh, the different sound effects in the song. It adds a real spookiness that you don't really hear in a lot of the songs. What a mood piece Riders on the Storm is, uh, just with the sound effects. Think back to when the first time it was when you heard Riders on the Storm and, and, and the way Jim Morrison was able to elicit fear. A masterpiece of, of Jim's songwriting as far as his lyrics go and storytelling. Writers on the Storm is, is another mini masterpiece and one of the first times where they uh, overdubbed uh, Jim's vocals twice, uh, singing the exact same line uh, but in a much lower tone, which gives it that, that eerie quality of which the way the song starts out. There's a killer on the road His brain is squirming like a toad Take a long holiday Let your children play If you give this man a ride Sweet family will die Killer on the road Yeah Lyrically, there's a killer on the road His brain is squirming like a toad You really felt some sort of looming uh, ominous figure that's gonna come get you. It was like the boogeyman kind of equivalent. And, uh, and, and that laid into the Doors' career. When Jim had been through so much, he was still a great actor. He could convey those lyrics with great authenticity and actually set a mood that was kind of scary and dark and dangerous. I mean, a lot of their music was very kind of like dark or kind of dangerous, but definitely with that song, um, I, I think it, it, it had a lot of images that Morrison was working on he was working on a play about a, a fellow who's a hitchhiker who murders a family and takes their car and stuff like this. And here's this song that's basically describing the idea he had for this film. It's just a song that I think really came together well. I'm sure they stood around and sort of scratched their own heads thinking, wow, do we just put this together? This is pretty cool. Because that's, that's just a, you know, a quintessential moment for, for The Doors. I think if the Doors haven't gone down as one of the greatest rock bands at this point, they surely will in the future. I think as the years go by, people will start to rediscover the Doors more. And I mean, I think I've read things that they're more popular today than they were when they were together. The fact that Doors albums still sell in pretty great quantities today um, illustrates the fact that uh, people still think that they have some sort of relevance to the music we listen to now. I firmly believe as long as I'm in the record industry I will keep selling Doors albums. People can go out and they can buy all their albums and hear all the kind of music. There's tons of books out about them and uh, there's a real kind of mystery you know there's lots of different things about the Doors that people really find interesting to read about. A film has been made about them, there's books about them you know you can say it's a bit like the Doors or it should sound a bit like the Doors you know, they've sold millions of records. The fact that other bands have taken what they've done and built on it and used it as a cornerstone of their sound proves that the Doors are certainly rated by musicians. They are highly regarded and they are one of my favourites. I still find mystery in them. I still find cheekiness. I find art. I find visual, mind-blowing effects from their music. The beauty of, of The Doors' music, something new presents itself every time, whether it be a Robbie Krieger lick, a little John Densmore fill, or a Ray Manzarek roll on the keyboards. Obviously, Jim Morrison, we've discovered and delved into all that there is. Uh, he's gone off this earth, so there's no more other than our imagination. But I think that musically, something new presents itself in every listen to a Doors record.